What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today I'm back at you with another video. We're gonna talk about why I don't do reptile shows or why I do very few reptile shows. Let's dive right into the video topic. There really isn't a one size fits all for a reptile show. I personally do not like them. I love attending them. I love seeing what other people have, but I do not like vending them for a variety of reasons. Some health issues with the snakes, others is just because I don't really plan to purchase anything there. I don't want to bring my animals around there. The number one reason I don't do shows is because it's a lot of stress on the animals. So to bring all these animals to a show is a, just for let's say a Sunday show, it's an all day process on a Saturday of me packing these animals up, putting them in containers, labeling them, getting them all set so that Sunday morning, let's say four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, I can pack them all up into a car, travel to the show, display them on the table in probably, you know, somewhat of un, I guess sanitary, unideal conditions for them, Keep them on a table all day with people going by, tapping on them, little kids banging on your table. You know, that's all, it's all part of the show. And then you bring them all back home the following, or that later that night. Treat them all for mites and for parasites and everything like that. Quarantine them for a week. And then you can finally potentially start putting them back into your general collection. I feel that whole process is just way too stressful for what it's worth. I have an animal here. This is one of my newer hypo bloods. And this, I had nice displays, but I don't have those anymore because I decided maybe three or four years ago, I'm just done with shows. And we're gonna get into a whole lot of other reasons why. But you know, this is a typical reptile show display. The day before, like I said, on Saturday, I'm going through, I'm labeling things, I'm packing things up, putting them in cases like this. This animal's gonna stay in this case until probably the next day. It's about the same amount of, of stress on an animal as shipping would be. The only difference between, you know, reptile show display, while well, I have this, this girl out, or this is a girl, this is uh, one of those new hypo bloods. Let me see if I can get my head out of the way. It's probably not gonna focus, but new hypo blood I just posted, or I, I will be posting, and uh, really pretty animal. It's, see, he's a feisty animal, like they usually are as babies. But uh, really, really nice looking blood boa. I know you guys like seeing this, so I figured I might as well show you. This is a hypo blood, no hets for anything. I wanted to actually make just some normal uh, blood stuff that's not het for sharp or call or anything like that. Uh, I think that's just as important as buying the stuff with the hets because it's a clean slate and it gives you a baseline for other things you wanna breed into it. For instance, if I had a het call, I can't breed a het VPI. That's a whole other video topic. So just wanted to show that animal off and kind of show, you know, typical, let's just call it regular reptile show display. Obviously you can have custom displays. It's the same deal. You throw some bedding in, little animal container. So back to the topic as I digress to show you that, that little girl is when you're doing these shows, it's a lot of stress on the animals. So that's my number one reason. Number two, I guess this could also be number one and goes hand in hand with the stress is disease transfer. There is so many different diseases at the shows. I, for a long time, just said, I'm done with shows. I finally said, let me try it again just to see what it's all about. It was probably four years that went by until I tried it again. And I was disappointed the first time and even more disappointed the second time. I'm not gonna name the show. I would call out the vendor if I knew who they were, but I just don't know the name of them. Their tables were disgusting. They had animals with mites you could literally see crawling on the animal. They had animals with d that were dead on the table. I mean, they were in a display like that, but literally dead, sitting there because they're in such poor conditions. So all of that together just said, I'm just done. I don't know what that animal died from, whether it was from stress, from diseases. I just didn't want to have anything to do with the show. I actually said, I'm gonna pack up early. I don't, I don't even want to be here. Uh, it, it was just a, a terrible, terrible show. I mean, terrible vendors. The show was packed with people and I've made another video of show etiquette. I'm probably going to make it again so that it's refreshed to the top. And you know, people like to take their animals they just bought, take their logs or stuff that they just bought, and as they're talking to you, they put it on your table. Well, whatever they put that on before, whatever could have crawled on that before, is now on your table. Hopefully there's nothing, but 
in most shows, there are going to be a lot of dirty vendors. Um, many vendors go from show to show to show to show. Those animals, I don't know what they have for quality and disease control, but I can't imagine if I'm taking this animal to a show, you know, Saturday, Sunday show every weekend, it really ever gets out of this container. It's probably just going to stay in my displays. I'll give it a little bowl of water. I'll feed it in those displays and then I'll just keep going. Or maybe they have a rack set up where they put all these animals back in the rack. Then they unpack them all and then they, or they, then they pack them all back again. Either way, I don't want to buy an animal that's been going from show to show. It's just not something I want. That's a great way to give yourself a disease. That's a great way, or should say, give your collection a disease. It's just nothing I want to take part in. So for those reasons there, I mean, those are my big drivers of why I don't do reptile shows. Now, I love reptile shows because I love to meet the people who are walking around. I have so many friends, so many people who I haven't seen in a long time, and it's my opportunity to get to see those people in person. But at the same time, I don't want to risk the health of my animals, whether it be the ones that I bring to the show or what I could bring back with me and spread throughout everything I have. That could be detrimental to a business, to your collection, to your pets. It's just not worth it to me. Uh, and additionally, you know, these shows, they're so frequent now that it's not like you're really seeing anything spectacular at these shows. It's not like there's a lot of people coming in the door to buy the animals. There are certainly people who buy things at shows. Shows 10 years ago were way different than shows today. Shows 15, 20 years ago were even more different. Shows 15, 20 years ago, there were only a handful of shows that you could actually ac access through just general travel. It was like a New Hampshire show, that, at least in New England. There was a New Hampshire show that would happen once a year, twice a year. Then a New York show that would happen once a year or twice a year. And everybody would save up all of their money. You know, There was no really good internet source at that time. We had Fauna Classified and, and King Snake and things like that. But there wasn't a huge internet. Nobody had internet on their phones and, and every, everything was just super accessible. You could see my entire inventory by just going to my website. So for that reason, people would save up all of their money, go to these shows with animals in mind, and they would purchase like crazy. Now they're more of, I'm going to go get an idea of what things look like so I can go purchase online which isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially when you consider the disease transfer that I was just talking about. However, most of these people selling online are bringing their animals to the shows and you're just buying this cycle. You think you're doing a better job for yourself by not purchasing at the show and in reality, you're just doing the exact same thing because that animal just left the show. I take extreme precautions when I go to shows and like I said, I think I'm just done. I'm just not even gonna bother. It's not worth the stress and effort that I need to put in. Uh, fortunately, I have a good online following, as some people don't. So I understand why people need to vend shows. You need to build your name and you need to build that reputation. I just don't feel like shows are that necessary at this point in time. Like my other videos I said, you know, you get a good reputation online. That is way better than any show you can possibly get. So all of those reasons combined, or why I don't think I'm gonna do shows in the future. I may actually just buy a table and sit there as this is my space to talk to people, not even bring animals. Uh, so, you know, unless somebody calls me ahead of time and said, hey, can you bring this animal to the show? At the same time, I may just go and walk around. Walk around, see what people have, say hi to people, and then leave early. But it's a long day when you're a vendor, and when you have people that aren't buying, or you have a huge risk of disease transfer, it's just not worth the effort to me. Uh, I think we need to do better jobs on these shows. These vendors are trying to fill their, fill their hall with as many tables as possible because that's how they make money, or I should say these, these show coordinators, the more tables they sell, the more people they put in, the more demand their show is gonna be, and overall, the more money they're gonna make. At the same time, I think we gotta do a better job. There should never be a vendor, just because they bought 10 tables, and this was a big vendor, they had 10, 15 tables maybe, they bought a whole end cap at the show. Half of their animals look sick, a, a few of them were literally dead on the table, and the other half, you could they were right next to all the dead ones. So, or next to all the dead ones and the sick ones. So 
why should why they shouldn't even be allowed in the show I would rather see that show take a loss. The show coordinator would probably disagree, but that show should take a loss before they let somebody like that in the door. And we just need to do a better job. So with all of that said, I mean, there's a whole slew of reasons why I don't do shows and why I'm probably not gonna do them in the future. And really why I recommend you don't buy from shows. So I, I don't wanna bash on the people that make their living from going to shows, but really everything from from betting to animals, I would stay away from. You think I bring Cocoa Blocks to shows, which I do not for a reason. If I brought Cocoa Blocks to a show, where am I gonna put those? On the floor, next to me, on my table? It's only a matter of time before mites crawl on that bedding. Somebody puts their animals on that bedding and now the mites are in it. And now I'm selling mites to you guys. So. They, you know, mites don't live in bedding, but they can be carried from places on bedding. So for those reasons, I mean, I hate to even say it, but I avoid most pet stores, especially reptile specialized pet stores. I, I avoid reptile shows. I avoid any place that really has a lot of volume of animals in and out, and especially buying supplies there. That's a great way to give yourself diseases and mites by purchasing from these places. They just can't have the type of quality control that somebody like myself or other breeders, other small breeders can do. The larger of a breeder you have, the more employees you have, the more risk that those employees are bringing things to your collection. I am not bashing these people by any means. It's just not my cup of tea. And after being in this hobby for so long, I've decided I'm just, it's not worth it. It's not worth it for me. I'm telling you it's not worth it for you, but everybody needs to find out things the hard way. So with all that said, I didn't mean this to be like this huge downer video. I think shows are an essential piece of our hobby. They allow kids to see these things in person. They allow adults to see these things in person. They're fantastic for educating and for just showing people the world of reptiles and a whole bunch of different species in one place. At the same time, I don't wanna bring my animals and participate in that act of, of showing as much as I wanna show you guys stuff. That's what this channel is for. So with all that said, I'm gonna close out this video. Give me some video topics on what you guys wanna see. This one was requested a bunch by people from Instagram and Facebook and YouTube of why I don't do more shows. Am I going to do shows? The answer is no, I'm not going to travel 1,000, 2,000 miles to go to a show on a weekend set up and sell $1,000 worth of lower end animals or inexpensive animals. I'm gonna sell them online. My time is not best spent by doing that. My time is best spent by making these videos for you guys. Every time I go to these shows, I say I could have made myself 10 YouTube videos today and I'd have 10 weeks of content. So again, I've said it for the third time. With all that said, until next week or until next video, I appreciate you guys watching and let's keep it moving.